Okay. We're in the middle of uh, part one training and we're talking today about vision. And the first thing that I want to say is that for the medical profession, everything is cut clear. They decided, and not yesterday or the day before yesterday, they decided in the 1800s that eyes cannot improve, full stop. If you're nearsighted, it's because the eyeball is long. Nobody's talking about why it become long, but it's long and the picture falls in front of the retina. And so whatever falls on the retina is fuzzy, just like if you had a, 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 a slide projector and the focal point of the slide projector would be ahead of the screen, whatever on the screen is not clear. And if it was presbyopic, which, mean, uh, which means uh, that the lens is too stiff, or if you have no lens after a surgery uh, and you don't have lens replacement, or if you uh, have a short eye, it, the picture would fall behind the, uh, ahead of the retina, just like a picture falls ahead of the screen. So what's on the screen is not clear. That's how they look at it. Nothing to say about it. You know, it's so interesting. So in so many fields, people have improved. Some people say that actually you can straighten the back. In the past, they said you can't do it. Some people say you can actually deal with the uh, uh, problems that lead to arthritis but when it comes into the eyes basically the outlook is forget it but I think that in Encyclopedia Britannica they basically said that um, uh, if you want to have answers you first of all have to ask the right questions and they never asked the question but if the eyes could improve, how could they improve? And what is really alarming is that the number of people with nearsightedness is growing from year to year. It used to be in my generation and your generation, Richard, uh, that if somebody was wearing glasses in school, they would call him four eyes or glasses. Now glasses is like a hat. Half of the kids have them, right? Uh, it's very interesting to see then that in the Amazon, 1% of the natives is nearsighted, while in Sao Paulo, 48% of them are. It's very interesting to see that in the Maoris in New Zealand, they don't have any nearsightedness. The Bedouins in the Z desert don't have nearsightedness. The, um, uh, the bush people in Africa have an amazing vision. For them, 2020 is legally blind. And yet, what we're seeing in Hong Kong and in Taiwan, 84% of the people are nearsighted. And we just decided to live with it, not to rebel against it, to simply ex accept it as it is. And then we have problems like we have in this class, some people with high myopia that leads to retinal detachment, to glaucoma, to uh, cataracts, to all kinds of problems. And high myopia is when you have nearsightedness more than nine or 10 diopters. But we have here people with 25 diopters that have that, that problem. So doing nothing is doing something, and that is destroying the eye's health. And truth of the matter is many things we're doing today that lead to eye problems. For example, constant near vision. If you study in school, you look at computer, you look at smartphone, you constantly are looking from near and eventually it affects your vision to the worst. We talked about the ciliary muscles of the lens. Well, they contract a lot when you look from near and they don't contract when you look at a distance and we never balance distance and near. And our eyes are very stressed, light sensitivity is growing by the millions these days among people, the pupillary capacity becomes weaker than ever. And we need to find a solution, but it's not coming from the medical profession. It's not gonna come from the medical profession. We need research into our work. And so that research will prove what I've seen with thousands of people. First of all, that nearsightedness can be remedied and at times totally overcome. Second of all, 
that if we learn new outlook at what glaucoma is, we could prevent it from ever occurring, we could prevent surgeries and medication. Third, that macular degeneration, unless it's juvenile, is something truly acquired and is a result of what we do rather than what we don't do. What we do is we don't look at details and the macula should look at details. It's only a percent and a half of the total uh, uh, of the total photoreceptor field and it can only see a small part. The fovea centralis is half a percent and it can see even smaller part but it sees very well. You see with the macular you see 2020, see with the fovea 2015, that means somebody who sees 2020 has to stand from 15 feet to see the same letters. And if you see through the foveula, which is central to the fovea, your vision is even better than that, 2010 or better. I've seen some people who saw 28, and I know of one who saw 26. Means that somebody who sees 2020 have to stand from six meters, ever from six feet to see what he's seeing. Okay. So, I've devised in my book, Vision for Life, and the book, Awakening Your Power of Self-Healing, and I was lecturing throughout the years about uh, the nine principles of natural vision improvement. Principle one is deep relaxation of the eyes. That's what we did palming right now. It's not that always palming is relaxing, but remember, palming, we rub the hands, we put the hands around the eye orbits, we visualize the color black, and we really rest the eyes. But many ways we can relax the eyes. There's no one way to relax the eyes. And sometimes palming does not work when the hands are nervous, but it's a great exercise. Second is adaptation to light frequencies and amplitude. Now we have one person here who is very, very light sensitive, but the rest of you, most people would sit even in a gloomy day like this with sunglasses, okay? Uh, and truth of the matter is people sometimes are with sunglasses indoors, which is crazy which prevents pupillary con constriction. And also, not having enough light is a good formula for depression. And it weakens the retina and it weakens the pupils. And it weakens the whole autonomic nervous system because the pupils should constrict all the way for the autonomic nervous system to work well. You cannot work on the eyes without working on the body. So tonight we're also gonna have a night walk. We also want to widen the pupils all the way. We also want to activate the 120 million rods which are in every uh, retina. Almost a, uh, a quarter of a billion cells are being deprived from the full work because we don't give them full darkness. So we need to adapt to the dark, which does not exist in major cities. Not in San Francisco, not in Manhattan, not in Tel Aviv. It just doesn't exist. We need to start and find ways to be in the dark. Very important. Third principle, distance viewing. That so many people have cataracts. Now I was born with cataracts. It's a whole different story. My kids were born with cataracts. That's also a whole different story. But most people acquire cataracts, which is opacity of the lens, as a result of not looking Far enough, we look a lot from near, but the lens doesn't have the wonderful exercise of the muscles are relaxed and we're looking at a distance. I also really believe in the reflex of the suspensory ligament, which stretches the lens and the neutral line. People think you can relax the neck, but you really can't relax the neck unless you also look at a distance. That's a very important thing, okay? The next principle is detailed vision. And I already mentioned, the macula is very small, the fovea is smaller, the foveula is even smaller than the fovea. And what we learn is to not be curious about what we're looking at. What you're picking in the supermarket is the can you want. You don't care about the rest of it. I mean, I love the fact that John walks with me outside and always, always bothers me and said, you see this bird, you see that bird, see this, this is wonderful for my eyes. Because her doing it helps me look. 
And even if I don't see exactly what she points out to me, I'm still looking. And being that I used to be raised reading Braille, I used to not look until these days. I dialed the phone without looking. A dangerous situation when I was trying to climb down Mount Tamopaya without looking. Believe it or not, I fell. I had to start to look with a flashlight. Well, anyway, looking at details is something that we don't do. We learn to picture whole pages instead of looking at parts of, of letters. We learn to not use the macula. And if we learn to use the macula, we will never have macular degeneration. And if we start macular degeneration, we can prevent it completely. We can stop it completely. And if you already have a bad macular degeneration, I saw that I was actually help, able to help people that the macula even disappears. But I normally don't claim that, but in few sessions it just happened. So now comes the, the next principle, which is peripheral vision. Do you remember we have a small piece of paper between the eyes and we wave our hands to the side and a medium and a large one and all that? That is to expand our periphery. Because what happens to most of us, we narrow our periphery. We don't pay attention to what's in the side. But our ancestors could have never survived the jungle if they wouldn't sense what they don't absolutely see. Which means the very side that you don't exactly see well is not being developed well. I think that's the main reason for glaucoma, which is a silent problem in the world right now that leads to many cases of blindness. So that is such an important thing for us to focus and to know that the periphery exists. The next principle of natural vision improvement is balance use of the eyes. So, you know, when we do this exercise with the paper uh, over our forehead and chin, and we throw the ball from hand to hand, we start to create balance of the eyes. When we have the red and green glasses and we do this uh, light and uh, red and green glasses and we read some things with the green, some things with the red, or we play cards, that one card you see with one eye, one with the other eye, that's working for balance use of the eyes. But no matter, no matter how you reach it, lack of balance use of the eyes is a big problem. Because the eyes in an infant are not balanced at first. And then they become balanced at the age of six months. And if you strain, you're getting off that balance. And lack of balance equals a lot of strain. <coughs> we have also that exercise with the two colors, exercise with the beads, all kinds of exercises to lead to balance. We have to lead to balance. The next principle is body and eye coordination. When we do work on a trampoline and look at different arrows and the body moves in the same direction that the arrows are moving, that is balance use of the eyes. I don't know if I told you about the case of somebody who had voluntary surgery for his heart that wasn't necessary at all, that caused a stroke of the optic nerve, okay? And uh, he lost 85% of his visual field. And when I got him to bounce on a trampoline and respond to those four arrows that we have, he bounced one side and clapped his hand, the other side, move his arm, land on his butt, land on his knees, all following those arrows, plus everything we're doing, the signing, the palming, and other things he got 85% of his visual field back. And then uh, we talk about getting more blood flow to the visual system. Blood flow to the visual system, without which none of the eye exercises would give you any compliance. You need to comply with that. So uh, we'll do just one exercise, and then after that we'll go in and do the questions and answers, okay? So move your head in rotating motion in both directions. Do you want, you can take a chair indoors. I think it's the best, take a chair indoors. Thank you for standing and listening, that's great. Yeah, of course. Okay, so move your head in rotating motion in both directions. So the camera is working, huh? Mm-hmm. In both directions. Sit straight, please, everybody. Now you can translate. Is it straight? And I just want you to know that you will read the nine principles in the French book. There's no problem. It's there. Okay? And then we will mention them again so you'll remember them. Yeah? Yeah.
So you move your head in rotating motion in both directions. Now, move your feet in rotating motion in both directions. Just the feet. Point the toes up to your knees, point the toes down, the heels are up. Move the feet in rotating motion in both directions. You keep the heels on until your toes are on the floor. When the toes are on the floor, the heels are going up. You see, my toes are on the floor, but my heels are going up. And then my heels are up, and the toes, I mean, my heels are down, and my toes are up. So my toes are down, my heels are up. So now we move it in rotating motion. We move the legs in rotating motion. Legs. So we move the whole body in rotating motion. Richard, bend your knees and move your whole body in rotating motion. If you can sit just a little bit farther from Colleen, who is Jean? There you go, perfect. That's it. Move your whole body in rotating motion. The whole body. So you move the whole body in rotating motion all the way. You look up, you look down. Yeah, you want to take away that stiffness. Yeah, and put your hands down. Put your, when you go down, put your hand down. Yeah. Move the whole body in rotating motion. Okay, now let me ask you this question. How does it feel to move the head in rotating motion? Like what? Right. Listen. So remember, we we move the feet in rotating motion. We move the feet in rotating motion, both directions. We then pointed the toes up, and then the toes down. Toes up, and then down. Feet in rotating motion. Then we move the legs in rotating motion. Legs. So, uh, jo uh, Richard, put the feet on the ground and move your legs in rotating motion. Now, top here and say center. 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 Hey, uh, Colleen, do it, please. Center. 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 Now move your head again. How does it feel? Better. Great. I think we have. Now, massage the scalp. Massage. Separate between the scalp and the skull. Separate between the skull and the scalp. And now move your head in rotating motion in both directions. Fantastic. That's the end of this little section. We're going to go for the questions and answers. Now pay attention to something. We were downstairs, we were in the dark room, we were outside. And that all comes to affect our breathing. Because you need to change a place. The way that your breathing goes away is that you sit in, in front of a desk mm -hmm. for eight hours a day right. and you do what you need to do in front of that desk. Sometimes but changing ambience mm -hmm. makes a difference. Yeah. And I'm telling you, you're going to all breathe better after walking tonight uh, in the night walk. Okay? Let's go answer questions. We'll have the whole day to do exercise after that. Okay.